Hey friends, how is everyone doing today? I haven't made a video for a while, so I thought I'd make this one today while the boys are at karate. If you hear my fan going in the background, I apologize. I cleaned some carpet areas earlier today and I'm trying to get them to dry. It's probably futile since it's rainy and humid here, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I make my garlic biscuits that I have sometimes on phase one and I will tell you the modifications if you want to make phase three biscuits. In my bowl, I have one cup of spelt flour for phase one. If you want this in phase three, you would need to use sprouted wheat. They work pretty much the same. I have baking powder. I have baking soda over here and my salt. I have black pepper. I have garlic powder. I have some dried parsley. I have some chopped up dried rosemary from my garden, and I have some thyme, some dried thyme. A little bit of xanthan gum over here. I like to use xanthan gum when I use spelt flour or sprouted wheat flour because it helps keep moisture in the biscuit so that it's a nice crumb and it's nice and moist and fluffy. If you don't have xanthan gum, you can use a teaspoon or so of tapioca flour or arrowroot flour will work or you can substitute some of the flour for some oat flour um, maybe a quarter cup or so no more than that that should work just fine so I'm going to stir these together I stir the dry ingredients together first hopefully this video turns out okay I'm trying a new setup with my phone kind of lazy and don't feel like pulling out all the apparatus that I have. I have my oven preheating to 450 and I have a cookie sheet that's got a little piece of parchment paper on it. Now into this I'm going to add just a little bit of lemon juice. Lemon juice, I highly recommend lemon juice if you're using sprouted wheat flour because it's a very coarse grind and the acid in the lemon juice or if you used vinegar which would work as well um, it softens the wheat a little bit so that it's not so dry and crumbly so I always put a little bit of that in there also because I put baking soda in here the lemon juice the acid and the baking soda will help it creates bubbles and, and gases and it will help to make the biscuits light and fluffy along with the baking powder I'm also adding an egg white that I beat up a little bit and only because I had it in my refrigerator and I needed to use it up. You can actually skip the egg white if you want. And I have some homemade oat milk that I just made. Now for my oat milk, what I did was I just took a little bit of rolled oats and soaked them in some hot water for about 10 minutes. Then I rinsed them in a colander and made sure I rinsed them really, really well. And then I measured them out, put them in, it's only about a half a cup or so, put them in my blender, and then I added three parts spring water, so a cup and a half of spring water to my blender, and blended it slowly, then turned the speed up, then on high, and then on extra high for a good minute, minute and a half. If you soak your oats long enough, you don't need to strain it at all because they should blend up. Now, this is a quick method that I use if I need to bake with oat milk. So it doesn't take very long. I can make it right in the pitcher. I'm only making just about the amount that I need. Um, the rest of this I'll use in a smoothie tomorrow. But if you're going to make oat milk to drink it, you're going to want to soak it for longer, at least four hours. Make sure you rinse it really, really, really well or your oat milk will get slimy after it sits for a while and no one wants to drink that. It's gross. Trust me. But if I'm just for baking, I, it's just this really quick, simple method. So I'm going to add a little bit of the oat milk because I just want to see what I need. It's a little humid today, like I said, and so sometimes when it's humid and I'm baking, I don't need to add quite as much liquid. And sometimes the flour is different, so I don't really measure the oat milk. I just go by sight here on this. So I'm going to stir this together. Now these are drop biscuits. They're not super beautiful by any means but they are delicious 
And I want this mixture to be a little bit loose, not a dough ball like for rolled biscuits. And I don't want to overwork this too much, just, just a little bit like that. And this is what it looks like right here. And then next, I have my cookie sheet. This is, it's really ugly because it's really old, but this is one of those air bake cookie sheets. It's got the two layers, so there's the air in between. I love these cookie sheets for biscuits, for um, cookies if I'm making cookies for people at, during the holidays, um, for anything that I can put directly on here. Love this sheet. I need a bunch more in bigger sizes. Used to have them a long time ago, but they got lost along the way with several moves. So now I'm just going to portion this out. In phase one, you would get about four portions from this batter. So I'm just going to eyeball it here and scoop out four biscuits, try to make them even sizes. Then we'll try to make them look a little bit prettier. Dough's very sticky and wet, which we want that because that will help to make them light and fluffy. Now I'll take all these little raggedy edges and kind of fold them up, fold them in. If you have anything sticking out like a big tall peak, that could turn really bright, really dark. And if you like dark and crunchy crust on your biscuits, by all means, then make them as jaggedy as you like. But if you like them to be tender and fluffy, try to smooth them out a little bit. And they don't have to look beautiful. They just need to taste good. Get all the dough here. Hate to waste anything at all. And this will go in the oven. I have my oven set at 450 Fahrenheit. And I'll put them in. And I'm going to turn it down to about 420, 425. And I'm going to bake these for anywhere between 9 and 10 minutes. I'm going to check them at 8 minutes and see what they look like. If you squish them together and they squish really easily and you can tell that the middle is not done, stick them back in for about another minute or so, but watch them. And depending on your oven, it could take, or the heat in your house, or the humidity, it might take a little bit longer. But usually right around 9-10 minutes is all they need to bake. And I'll come back and show you what they look like as soon as they're done. Okay, here are the biscuits fresh out of the oven. You can see they're a little toasty brown on the top. And opening them up, you can see how light and fluffy they are inside. And they smell so good. They smell like garlic and herbs and oh, I cannot wait to have these with dinner. My husband loves these. Oh, they smell so good. Super easy, super fast to make. You can make them in about 15 minutes if your oven's hot. So I hope you guys give these a try. It's a great versatile way to get your grain in with your meal. If you're not having pasta or tired of quinoa or don't want brown rice, you can make garlic or biscuits. I'll link the recipe down below so that you can follow along. Please give my video a thumbs up, a like, subscribe to my channel, share my videos, um, do all those things to help me out and help promote my channel. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I hope you tune in next time. Bye guys!